Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to Aesthetic Imaging Video Tutorials. Today we're going to be talking about procedural title reveals. So let's take a look at what we're going to be creating. We have our first example. And then here we have our second example. All right, so there's a lot to cover, so let's get started. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is create a new comp. We're gonna call this Texture PC for pre-composition. All right, we're gonna make the size 1920 by 1080. We're gonna do 23.976 frames per second. And uh, duration of 10 seconds should be fine. All right, let's hit OK. All right, so before we actually get started, I wanna let you guys know that all the assets that we're gonna be using, plus the After Effects file, will be available for you to download so you can actually follow along. And yep, link in the description. All right, so now inside our texture PC, all right, we're gonna open up our assets, and inside here we have this Concrete Stripes Albedo. We're gonna add that to there. And we're gonna hit S on the keyboard for scale. And we're just gonna scale it down to about there. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a motion tile. All right, it's under stylize, motion tile. And we're gonna add that to our concrete stripes. And the only thing we're gonna do is just up the output, whoop, output width and until we reach the edge of the frame. There we go, that's it. Let's go into our project and let's drag this down, our texture PC down into a new composition. Already on the right track. <laughs> texture, and this one's gonna be called Texture Comp. All right, there's our texture PC. Now what we're going to do is create a new solid. And it doesn't really matter what color. And we're going to call this transition. And uh, we're going to hit OK. All right. So now we have this solid. So on top of our solid, we're going to add a radial wipe. And that is under transition, radial wipe. Add that to our solid. Now you can see this, what this does as we mess with the transition completion. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to where it says wipe, and we're gonna set this to both counterclockwise and clockwise. So that way it goes out from each side and then meets down in the middle. All right, and what we also wanna do is set this to 180. And set this to something like 50%. So that way it's a straight line. All right, so now we're gonna take this origin point here. We're gonna click on it, hold down shift, and then drag it up till it's just outside the comp. So we're gonna click on the stopwatch for transition completion on the first frame here. All right, now we're gonna go to maybe three seconds here. And we're gonna set this to zero. Now for this keyframe, we're gonna right click on it, go to keyframe assistant and go to easy ease in. We can even go into our graph editor here and just pull this in yeah, about there. There we go. So that's our transition wipe. So now what we're gonna do, oh, actually we gotta feather this. So we're gonna feather it a whole bunch, like a whole bunch. 369 lulls. So now we have this. All right, so now what we wanna add on top of this is, hold on, Colorama. So it's under color correction, Colorama. We're gonna add that on top of our transition. So we're gonna twirl open our input phase and we're gonna go to get phase from and we're gonna set this to alpha. All right, 
that's it for that part. All right, so now we're gonna open up our output cycle, go to use preset palette, and set this to ramp gray. Now we wanna go into modify, and check off this change empty pixels. Now we have a solid black and white mat with a nice little fade to it. All right, so we're gonna set this transition to linear light. So now we have our concrete showing up behind here and maybe let's uh, bring this out even more. Yeah, that's fine. On top of our texture PC, we're gonna add a fast box blur. Blur and sharpen fast box blur. Pop that onto our texture, repeat edge pixels, and we're gonna set this to three. And we're also gonna add a turbulent displace. Distort, turbulent displace, put that on top. All right, so for our amount, we want to turn this up. We want to stop it from doing that. All right, so we're going to turn this up to... That looks fine. All right, and our size, we're actually going to turn down a bit. Something like that. And under Evolution, we're going to Alt-click on the stopwatch, and we're going to type in time times, uh, let's see, 75. All right, so without the transition, this is what it's looking like. And that's just to give it a little bit of movement. All right, so let's turn this back on. All right, and I think I'm gonna add a curves. So color correction curves, let's add that on top. Kind of bring this into an S curve. There we go. Cool. All right, so we're going to rename our texture comp to transition comp. And now we are going to create another composition. We're going to call this uh, text PC all the same settings and all that and stuff. So let's uh, create a new text layer. All right, and I'm gonna type in Cherry Springs. Nope, that was right the first time. There we go. And we're gonna click on layer and we're gonna set this to, I'm using Korolev Compressed. It actually comes with the uh, type kit so if you have After Effects legally, <coughs> um, you should have it. So we're gonna do Korolev Compressed, and we're gonna make this bold. And we're also gonna turn on Faux Bold, just to make it even more bold. We're just a whole bunch of bold people in here. All right, so our text height, we're gonna set that to 100. And let's turn up the size to maybe about 508-ish. Adjust line spacing. All right, so let's align this in the center. Grab our move tool by hitting V on the keyboard. Click on our Cherry Springs layer and shift and bring up. Something there, because we're gonna add another text layer underneath. So new text, and this one's gonna say dark, mm, caps lock, dark sky park. All right, so for this one, we're gonna set, instead of bold, we're gonna do light. Let's bring down our size. Align it in the center here. All right, go back to character, and we're gonna shrink this down until it's the same width as our Cherry Springs text. And then we're gonna hit V, 
click shift, bring that down right below. And let's set the height to be about 77. All right, so let's select our Cherry Springs here and just move it down a bit. There we go. All right, so nice big bold title. All right, so that's our text PC all taken care of. All right, so now we're gonna take our transition comp and our text PC, and we're gonna drag that into a new composition. And let's see, single composition. And we wanna make sure that sequence layers is checked off. All right, so use dimensions from, uh, doesn't matter which one you select, they're both the same size. So let's hit okay. And let's rename this right away to, let's see, title, reveal, comp. How about that? Title, reveal, comp. All right, so we're gonna select, or we're gonna go to our text PC, go to where it says track mat, and we're gonna set this to loom mat, transition comp. Now you can see, as we play this, it reveals our title. So it's worth mentioning that most of this technique came from uh, Video Copilot. Um, this isn't gonna be as detailed. We're just creating a smoke layer. From here on out, it's gonna be pretty similar. It just looks so good and I use it on so many different projects, I guess you could say. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate our transition composition and we're gonna, in between these two, we're gonna add a new adjustment layer and we're gonna call this blur and then blur mat. All right, so on top of our blur, we're gonna add a compound blur. Blur and sharpen, compound blur. We're gonna add that right on top of there. Why is this all the way over there? All right, so let's take a look at this. Uh, we're gonna do invert blur and we're gonna set blur layer to blur mat. And we're gonna set this to effects and masks. And what we're gonna actually gonna do is add another curves. Boom, add that right on top of there. Add a little another S curve. All right, and we can actually adjust this mat. So if we want the blur to kinda go a really long way here, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna set it, yeah, we're gonna leave it at the first frame. All right, so now what we're gonna do is duplicate our blur mat, command D, and we're gonna call this disp map. All right, and between the blur and the displacement map, we're gonna add another adjustment layer. And we're gonna call this disp. So we're gonna go to effects and presets, and we're gonna type in transform. So it's under distort, transform, add that on top of our displacement. And we're gonna add a displacement map. All right, so distort displacement map. And we're gonna add that on top. So our channels, we're gonna set this to illuminance and luminance. And our horizontal displacement, we're gonna set to zero. And we're gonna set our vertical to about 55. Now it's not doing what we want it to do. But first we have to set the displacement map layer to displacement map. And effects and presets to get that curves in there. So as you can see, as we play around with our displacement, it's pulling the smoke down, but it's also pulling our text up. So the reason why we have this transform is to fix that. So we're gonna add an expression to the position. So alt click on the stopwatch. We're gonna type in value plus open bracket. And we're gonna pick whip to our max horizontal and then add a comma and then pick whip to our max vertical displacement. 
And if you want, add that semicolon at the end. And now we have this. So as it animates, it's being pulled up. Now this looks a little uh, bad. Maybe we can uh, bring this down just a bit. Eh, something like that. All right, so now what we're gonna do is move this displacement and the displacement map below our blur. And we're gonna take our blur mat and maybe bring this over a couple frames. Yeah. Maybe a couple frames more. Okay, we're at six now. There we go. Now, uh, we just wanna add one more thing. So let's duplicate our blur mat, Command D. Let's rename this to Turb Mat. And in between our blur and turb mats, we're gonna add another adjustment layer. And we're gonna call this one turb disp. Turbulent displacement. All right, so now we're gonna type in turbulent displacement into our effects and presets. It's under distort, turbulent displace. All right, so for this turbulent displacement, I'm gonna turn the amount up uh, something pretty big, like 103. And then for the size, I'm gonna turn that down. Yeah, something like that. All right, so now we're gonna alt click on the stopwatch for evolution. And we're gonna type in time times nope, 75. All right, let's move this over to the first frame. And what we want to do is actually turn our turbulent displacements track mat to luma mat, to luma mat inverted. <laughs> Nailed it. There we go. And then we're gonna actually duplicate these. And for our second turbulent displacement, we're gonna make the amount a little bit smaller Go to where we can see this. All right, and the size we're gonna turn up. Pretty significant amount, maybe like 86, I don't know. All right, so now we're gonna double tap U. And for our time expression, let's change this to 100. All right, so that's our transition. And actually what I wanna do is go into our transition comp and open up the keyframes for our transition and move that to like six seconds. All right, so title reveal comp, let's take a look at what it's looking like. All right, let's play this back. There we go, that looks nice. All right, so we're not done with this, come on. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our project here and we're gonna take our Milky Way image and we're gonna put it into a new composition. All right, let's move this out of here. We don't want that in our assets. All right, so now we're gonna do our title reveal comp. We're gonna drag that on top, maybe move it over a couple, maybe move it over to one second, get a nice little view of the Milky Way. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our Milky Way. We're gonna to go to the track mat and we're gonna set this to alpha inverted. So that way, wherever our logo reveal is, it will actually cut it out of this image, as you can see. Oh, if you don't have this transparency grid, um, it's this button right here, in case you didn't know. I usually just have it on almost all the time anyway. But uh, yeah, so now we have our title cut out. So now we need to fill that back in. So we're gonna add a new solid and we're gonna make this white and just bring that down below our uh, Milky Way. All right, so let's play this back.
see, once you uh, turn it into a white solid, that smoke effect looks really nice. All right, so now we're done with that. Let's grab all of these and put them in a new folder. And we can just call this Milky Way. Bam. All right, so now what we're going to do is create a new composition. We're going to call this Corning Trans PC. 1920, blah, 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 blah. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do is make sure that we are in 32 bits per channel. All right, so inside here, we're going to create a new solid. We're going to call this uh, Lava Mat. All right, on top of this, we're going to add a linear wipe. So it's under transition, linear wipe. Let's throw that on top of our Lava Mat. Same deal, transition completion. Here we go. And we're going to set this to 180. And we're going to, at the beginning, we're going to set this to 100 at a keyframe and go to maybe uh, three seconds in and set this to zero. Speed on that looks okay. So on top of this, we're going to add a turbulent displacement. So distort, turbulent displacement. All right, so for amount, we're gonna turn this up. Something like that. Size, we're gonna turn up as well. Something like that. And complexity, we're gonna turn up to, I don't know, something like 2.5 maybe. So now we have that going on and maybe, maybe turn down the size a little bit. Yeah, we'll do something like that. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a colorama, colorama, put that on top of there. And we're going to do the same thing we did for the first example. So intensity, we're going to set to alpha or get phase from, we're going to set the alpha output cycle ramp gray. Modify, change empty pixels, and there we go. All right, so that's our first layer. That's our transition. All set up. Oh, right. We also want to do our evolution. So alt click on that stopwatch. We'll do time times 75. All right, so let's create a new composition. Let's go into our project, new composition, and we're going to call this Corning Text PC. All right, so we're going to right click, new text, and we're going to type in glass blowing, and we're going to set, we're going to use the same font. And we're going to set this to bold. And we can go to align. And just kind of align that. All right. Hit V. Bring that up just a little bit. Maybe actually go back into character and set this to 100. Faux bold. Let's turn that on. And let's actually bring this in just a little bit. Now we can go through and change this up so that they're more uniform. So I'm going to do that real quick. All right. So let's select the layer. Let me turn that down, turn up the size. All right. Now let's do another new text and let's type in Corning Museum of Glass. Let's turn, set this to light, bring down the size, make it the same width as our main text. Let's grab this layer and pull it down. 
and maybe turn down the height and turn off faux bold. Let's there we go. Now just bring that up, select both of these, and bring them down just a little bit so it's right in the center, nice and good. All right, so now we have our transition and our text. All right, so now that we have that, let's take our Corning Trans and our Corning Text PC and add that to a new composition. Single, sequence, size, blah, blah, blah. So now what we're going to do is take our text, bring it below our transition, and we're going to set this to mm, a Luma mat. All right, let's play this back, see what it looks like. All right, our transitions may be a little too fast, so let's take, bring this out to like maybe four and a half seconds. How about that? Yeah, we'll go with that. All right, so let's go to our project window here. Let's change our Corning Text to PC2, which is this composition. Let's change this to uh, Reveal Comp. How about that? All right, so on top of our Corning text, let's uh, bring this over. On top of our Corning text, we're going to add a fill, generate fill, and we're going to put that on top. And we're going to change this to like an orange, something like that. And then we're going to add a fractal noise. All right, noise and grain, fractal noise. We aren't going to change much. Maybe um, change this to dynamic progressive. And sub settings, we're going to open that up and change this to 180. We're close to it. So we get this kind of like fiery looking thing. Let's go into transform and maybe bring that up just a little bit. Something like that. All right, evolution. We're gonna alt click on that stopwatch and we're gonna type in time times 200. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is set the blending mode to overlay. All right, so on top of our corning transition, we're gonna add a new solid and this is gonna call, we're gonna call this bubbles. All right, so we're going to add a CC particle world. Add that on top of our bubbles and our emitter. We're going to move down to about there. Earth rate, we're going to turn down to one. Longevity, we're going to turn up. All right, to determine how long we're going to do that, uh, first let's make the producer. We're going to set the X radius so that it encompasses the whole frame here. All right, that's it for that. Physics, we're going to actually set the velocity to zero. And gravity, we're going to put at negative 0 0.02. So like a really low gravity. Yeah, so longevity, we need to turn that way up. So it goes past our text. Here, let's uh, make this easier to see. All right, so now we want to go to our particle, set particle type to bubble. Now we got bubbles. Our birth size, we're going to set to 0.1. And death size, the same thing, 0.1, so that they're smaller. Size variation, we're going to leave at that. Max opacity, we're going to turn down just a little bit to maybe like yeah, that. All right. Color map, we're going to set to origin constant. And that is it for particle world. Particle world. And yep, there we go. All right. So we're going to set this to screen. All right. Let's turn off our corning text here. All right. So these bubbles, uh, I want them to kind of, you know, move around a bit. 
bit rather than just go straight up. Unfortunately, Particle World is very limited and there's not much you can do to control it. So what we're gonna do is add a Turbulent Displace. Add that on top of our bubbles. And the amount we're gonna turn down, something like 21 maybe. Size we're gonna leave at 100. So that way as they go up, they kinda all right, so also on top of the bubbles, we wanna add a fast box blur, just to blur them out a little bit. Blur and sharpen, fast box blur, add that on top. And we're just gonna turn this up to like two. All right, we're gonna set this to screen. So we want to make sure that our bubbles aren't showing up anywhere besides on layer or inside of our text. So we can take our corning text, duplicate that, bring that above our bubbles, and set this to alpha mat. So that way our bubbles only show up on our text. All right, so let's play that back. There we go. All right, so now what we're gonna do is go to our assets here, and we're gonna take this corning glass and we're gonna put it in a new composition and then we're gonna take our reveal comp and put that on top. All right, let's play this back. All right, so we have our text revealing on. So now what we wanna do is set this to add. Boop. And then what we also wanna do is we're gonna put a glow on top of it. So we're looking for stylized glow we're going to put that on top. We're going to set this to 0 0.05 and turn down the glow threshold and turn up the radius just a bit to about 23, 20-ish. All right, so now what we're going to do is duplicate that and raise the radius to be about three times the size. And if you want, you can duplicate it again, make a really big glow. All right, maybe go back into our reveal comp here. Let's maybe darken down, darken down our fill a little bit and see what that looks like. There we go, that looks better. All right, so let's play this back. And we have our transition or our reveal. All right, so that does it for today's episode. Uh, don't forget, if you want, you can download the files for this so that you can follow along. Or, I mean, if you're already at the end, you have already watched it. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, anyway, you can download it. Uh, link in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.